a list uh, here uh, on the agenda. So I think we'll start off with the uh, IRODS overview. We've got the intro slide there. And so uh, Jason uh, is joining us. He's uh, been working for 21 years uh, in a variety of areas, uh, ranging from virtual reality, EDA, visualization, data management. Uh, he was technical director to start up uh, where he was developing uh, projection and distortion correction technologies. Uh, he became the first member of the visualization team at Rinse, creating large novel format multi-touch systems and has moved on now to sort of become the project technical lead uh, and chief technologist of the IRODS consortium, where he now provides management and oversight for the consortium. So uh, I'll go ahead and let you kick off, Jason. All right, thank you very much. So I'm here, I'm just gonna give a high level overview since we uh, just go out and talk about what IRODS is, what it can do for you and uh, how it does those things. So first of all, IRODS is an open source, distributed, metadata driven and data centric piece of technology. And we like to talk about it as a flexible framework for the abstraction of your infrastructure. It started out originally as a grid storage technology and has grown the ability to automate the data management and policy with an integrated scripting engine and that provides a wide array of different capabilities of all of your change and insulate the users and the clients above that from all of that change so we'll talk about data virtualization where IRODs can surface a number of different storage technologies, such as object and tape. You may want to talk about how you can take that data out of the one storage system and put it into another storage system, such as Scratch for high performance computing or high throughput computing. And then how do we find that data? You have, you know, petabytes and petabytes of data scattered everywhere. So you're going to want some sort of technology to allow you to discover that and so on. So IRODs provides all of these different capabilities that, as I said, insulates the users and the different clients, you know, be that command line all the way out to web applications or say the discovery environment, which is a much more rich browser-based interface. And all of these things can change under the covers without having any break to your users. <clears throat> so the first thing we'll talk about is data virtualization. And this speaks to the ability of IRODs to provide a unified namespace on any kind of storage technology. So this could be a file system such as like NetApp. This could be cloud storage and Amazon or, or uh, Microsoft. You could have, have on-premises object storage. How are you going to get that data from the on-premises object storage, say, to an off-premises object storage and still have your users be able to discover and utilize their data? And we also can speak to various archival storage systems. So that could be Amazon's Glacier. That could be a tape system such as HPSS and so on. So the takeaway here is that IRODS provides a logical view into this complex physical representation of your data that could be geographically distributed or it could be simply in a cluster in your basement. Now, we like to think of this as a projection of the storage up into this logical namespace. So IRODS organizes data into collections, which are logically represented. These are hierarchical, of course, and we can get all the way down to say a data object. Now this data object is once again, a logical representation of your data. That data object can represent one or more physical instantiations of that data, which we call replicas. And those replicas could be stored anywhere. So they could be stored locally, or you could have a replica that is also geographically distributed, say for locality of reference. You want the ability to have a user have fast access to their data while that Replic that data is geographically distributed. And so IROD gives you the ability to do that. And that also provides durability. So if one server is down for whatever reason, you have a high availability to access your data. And what this means is that while we have, say, a logical path of temp zone home rods the file, that logical path may map to one or more physical locations of that data. So the physical path of that data would be you know, varlib, irods, vault, home, the file, and then we have two other replicas in U2 vault and U1 vault. So this one logical path maps to any of these physical instantiations of the, the data. Now let's say that you had one of these replicas 
to store it in S3. There, there would be a bucket and a key associated with that. Or say you had it in DDN's WAS, the physical path would ab actually be an object ID, some sort of hash of the data itself. And IROTS provides this logical view on top of all of this complex storage infrastructure. Now, since we have a catalog, which manages this unified namespace, we have the ability to write things down about the data itself. So IROTS has the ability to attach metadata triples to any entity within IROTS itself. So that could be the data object, that could be the logical collections, we can also attach metadata to the so that giving the ability to attach metadata makes that data actionable, makes it useful, and it gives you the ability to reason about it. Otherwise, you're going to end up having to read every file within the system in order to figure out what you want to do with that file. Since we can attach metadata to the users and metadata to the data objects and metadata to the storage resources, we can start reasoning about these. So Within, the, within our rods itself, we can ask ourselves, does this user have the appropriate role to access this blue server here because that server may be HIPAA compliant? So now the metadata attached to the storage resources actually not only give the storage resources, but also the servers themselves an identity, a thing about which we can reason, which also gives us the ability to implement a wide array of other use cases, not just simply whether or not a user is authorized to, to interact with a particular storage resource. And since we have this metadata, and I had talked about how um, IROTS had a, a integrated scripting engine, we'll, we can talk about workflow automation. So this is an integrated scripting language that is built into IROTS, which is of your choice. So this could be Python, this could be JavaScript. You can also build very performant C++ rule engine plugins that perform one specific task. And these, this scripting engine responds to what we call dynamic policy enforcement points. So a policy enforcement point is a rule hook that is uh, for pre and post that is wrapped around any operation within IRODS itself. And these operations are scattered across all of the, the rest of the plugin interface within IRODS. So as a user authenticates, as a user accesses the storage, you can inject your opinion or your data management policy into the system and have the system automatically enforce that. And what that means is that you can take the policy that may be written down somewhere, and you know, typically most users will ignore, and have that computer actionable and have the system automatically apply those rules. And so for a quick example here, if a user puts some data into IRODS, that will trigger the pre-put hook. Your code injected there can reason about whether or not the user is allowed. Say, does that metadata attribute on the user, match up with the metadata attributes on the particular storage resource with which you're trying to interact. Is that, is that okay? If it is, you get a check mark and then the operation is triggered. Assuming that operation is successful, the post hook will fire. On a put, this is typically where users would want to say automatically extract metadata from data that's at rest and apply it to the catalog. Or say if you're putting in a, a, a thumbnail, a, an image, you can generate thumbnails and so on. There are many different use cases there. Now this put operation can fan out into any number of other policy enforcement points which are triggered through the plugin interface. And so the idea here is that across all of the different operations within the system, for a put that's about 1200 operations or different policy enforcement points that may fire, you can have an opinion about what happens in the system. So coupling that metadata with the integrated scripting engine gives you the ability to implement any number of use cases. And we, we like to say that, as I said earlier, IRODS is metadata driven or data centric and metadata driven. And the last thing that we can talk about is secure collaboration. This speaks to the IRODS ability to federate different unified namespaces or what we call different zones. The idea here is, is that since we have a catalog and a network protocol, since effectively IRODS is the distributed technology, not only can different IROD servers within a single zone speak to each other, but different IROD servers in different zones can speak to each other. So the idea here is, is that you share a couple keys which represent your, you need some users and grant some access, and then you can immediately start collaborating. 
You don't need common infrastructure anymore. You don't need shared funding to buy common infrastructure. And this affords a temporary collaboration. You don't have to stand up a monolithic piece of, piece of technology to collaborate with your users. You create the federation, you create users and grant access, and you can immediately start collaborating. And when you're done, you can delete the keys and delete the users and continue about your business. So if you think about the second slide, how IROD's was sitting in between the infrastructure and the client, and you wrap IROD's around all of that infrastructure in a circle, you effectively now have a service interface between your technology and a collaborator's technology. And the idea here being that you're no longer, you can, you're not only sharing data, you are sharing infrastructure. If your collaborator has data that is not allowed to leave their data center, you can launch jobs in their data center in order to gather your results and just simply share the results of that analysis. They can do the same thing with the other users as well and vice versa. So the idea here is, is that these collaborations can be dynamic and then they can be quite powerful because you are leveraging more than just simply the data itself. And I believe my time is up. Are we, uh, are we saving questions till the end or we can take questions now? Either way. Speaking. It looks like Niall is muted. Yeah, he's oh, a little bit. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I'm sitting here talking to myself again. I'm really good at that. Um, so yeah, I was going to say a nice, nice presentation, good overview of, of a lot of the IROD's things. Why don't we go ahead and turn over for, for some questions right now, if anybody has any. Okay. I had one question. Had one question. John, how do you handle identity management? Uh, is it that, entirely within uh, IRODs or do you leverage something like in common? Uh, so IRODs, one of the plugin interfaces to IRODs is authentication. And so IRODs manages it since it, since we have the catalog and we can attach metadata to users, users exist um, within IRODs catalog itself. Typically, what happens is that we end up synchronizing the IROD's user catalog against anything like LDAP or Active Directory and so on. And so that is completely up to the users. So we handle authentication via GSI, Kerberos. Um, we also route out through PAM, and we can reach a number of different um, AAI technologies there. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Uh, this is Christine. I just want to say I've, um, you know, been following IRODs and of course we've used IRODs for many projects and I'm always impressed by every time I see a presentation, all the neat new things that you've added and um, know it's very difficult to make this all work together. I hope it's not too indelicate to ask this question. Um, you can punt if you want, but is, do you have any um, uh, people that you work with who are using IRODs and Globus together? So I know that. Oh, absolutely. Globus has some things that maybe Absolutely. Yes, we, overlap. Go ahead. We overlap a little bit, but we don't we don't overlap terribly much. Um, if you look at EU DAT, there are 24 or 25 sites that are um, based on IRODs and, and they use Globus for uh, a lot of data movement. Um, through the NIH Data Commons project that we're working on, we will be much more tightly integrating with Globus, and which means that we will actually be able to register data objects that are Globus endpoints into the catalog. So we're going to write a resource plug in to interact with Globus in that way, as well as through authentication and other means. And uh, when our next plugin, inter when our next um, plugin interface is released, uh, or our multi-part transfer, we're going to consider Globus as a means um, by which to actually move the data under the covers. So IRODS negotiates the connections and then the Oh, very interesting. Can, may I ask a follow-up question? Is it possible to use IRODs with the, the Globus authentication? Uh, yes, that's one of the things that we are going to be providing is an authentication plugin for Globus Auth. I would be really interested, maybe I could follow up with you um, to see if there are any reference architectures for what EU DAT has done. I think that would really inform some projects we're um, going to be embarking on shortly. No, absolutely. Please send me an email. Thanks a lot. 
Yeah, this is Mike. Could you include me in that conversation too? Because we're hearing all sorts of things about Globus integration too. Sure. So this is Niall. I'll jump on that bandwagon as well. Um, I know we're using uh, Globus transfer, <laughs> Globus auth in the whole tale. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the power behind having Globus auth and being able to use your, your local identity has been fantastic for that project so far. And including that with IRODs, which we run quite a bit of here at, at TAC as well, would really, uh, really help. Um, are you working with them on, on actually getting down to the user management level at that point? Or is it just the author, authentication portion? Um, right now, we're just looking at writing a plugin. But if there are use cases that would be you know, highly desirable to the community, I really want to hear about them. OK. Very cool. Yeah, this is John. I'll jump on that bandwagon as as well. Maybe the entire group is going to jump on, but I uh, I would be fascinated to hear more. Well, and I think that's a lot of the uh, power of what this working group uh, can do is um, not just um, certainly amplifying you know exemplars in the different spaces, but then also doing the hard work or, or shining a light on the hard work others have done to um, wrap powerful exemplars together. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, I think we have time. If we have some